Well, uh, today I'm going to tell you how I manage my work and my life and uh, why it still feels like playing and having fun. And I'm also going to tell you something about how I try to put some fun and play in uh, the company that I work for. So first of all, a bit about myself. My name is Grit Langedok. It's quite simple and uh, I have three lovely children. And um, so as uh, the nice lady told, I'm uh, organizing Ghent Wevelgem, a world tour cycling race. Um, well, actually it's not one race, we have five of them. We have women and we have youth. And we have um, uh, almost 5,000 VIPs a day. And the budget has uh, tenfold in the last 10 years. So we really had a change from a club of volunteers to a real, towards a real company. So today turnover is 1.3 million euro. So a bit crazy if you ask me, because that's all for some guys on a bike. They start in Danes and the first one who arrives in Mavenham is the winner. But uh, it's a business. And next to that, I also work for Matexi. Matexi is a real estate developer. I work there as an HR officer. And I have several responsibilities. Uh, CSR, internal communication, the corporate events, nice, fun. And uh, I also manage a division of blue collars. Um, those people are not building our houses, but they are cleaning our houses before we deliver them to the clients. And they also tidy up the construction places. And it's a special project because those people, uh, they come from social weak groups. So we have people who are unemployed for more than two years, we have unskilled people, we have foreign people, we have ex-prisoners, you name it, we have it. And most of the job is taking care of their private matters, like um, housing and debts and administration and divorce and even abortion and, and things like that. So there you see one of my teams. And next to that, uh, um, I'm also a volunteer firefighter. And before you ask, yes, a real firefighter, I do everything that men do, except I can't be standing up. So, and I often get a question from people, how do you do that? How do you manage all of that? And then I say, I don't see any problem because, you know, I really have the feeling that I don't work. I just have fun. And of course, I have deadlines and responsibilities and tasks I'm not that fond of. But most of the time, I'm just enjoying myself. So, but I looked a bit further and I looked for my motivation. What motivates me and what motivates you and you and us to do our job? And um, I found an interesting research and um, they looked to the reasons why people are motivated. And one of the reasons they found was, of course, this. Reward. But only for simple tasks. Only for simple tasks. So I have to say with my blue colors, I know this is how they are uh, able to do what they do. Um, so for simple tasks, it's a carrot. If you do this, then you get that. But when they look to more difficult tasks, when you need to think and you need your, uh, all your skills, it's the other way around. Then the larger the reward, the higher the reward, the poorer the performances. Incredible. But you have to believe me, they've done this research over and over again in all parts of the country, and it is like that. The higher the reward, the poorer the performances. Thank God they did find what motivates us, and um, this is one of it. Purpose. People want to have a purpose. A purpose in their life and a purpose in their job. And people are very willing to work for companies that have a purpose. So and if I look at my company, Nice, we have this nice vision. Everybody deserves a great place to live. Isn't that nice? Isn't that plain for good? And we also have a mission, a reason why we exist, and that's to create those great places. And if I look at our projects, well, uh, nice neighborhood, I would say. Yeah, this, there I want to live. So we have this vision and this mission. We have our reason to exist. Second, mastery. People want to get better in stuff. They want to do their job in less time, at a higher quality, with a bigger expertise. And again, check, we have this academy. We have an academy where you can follow all kinds of educations, from Excel, time management, coaching skills, over uh, real estate legislation, everything. And uh, she's also very fond of mastery, because um, I have to confess something. I 
absolutely have no degree. I quit school when I was 18. So it's only because of that mastery that I'm standing today when I'm standing here and that I'm doing what I'm doing. So mastery. And the last one is autonomy. People want to be self-directed. They want to have the control. They don't want a boss who's looking over their shoulder, looking at every step they take. No, they want to do their job their way. And uh, happily, we have all these new technologies that make it possible to do our job when we want it, how we want it, and where we want it. So I'm also fond of autonomy. Nobody is asking me, are you working today for Montexi or are you working for Gantway for Gantway? Or, or you are fighting a fire, you have to start at nine o'clock. The only thing that counts are the results. So autonomy. Hallelujah, I found my motivation. Well, yeah, I found my motivation, but not the reason why I look to my life like it's a, like it's a play and it's a game. So I looked further and I found the answer through my children. I don't know if you know this lady. Mary Poppins, marvelous lady, a marvelous movie. And uh, she also has a song. I think it's about tidying up a room. And in that song, she sings this. Find the fun and snap the jobs again. So, and if I look to my life, that's really what I do. I look at the job and I say, all right, this looks nice. This is, this is like a game. Because when I'm thinking about Ghent Webergem and all those races and uh, all these VIPs and the schedules and, and, and the timings and things like that, let's say it's nothing more than just a big puzzle. And uh, oh, at Fire Brigade, this is marvelous. There I feel like a whelp, I, like a naughty girl. I can jump and I can climb and I can, uh, I can do dangerous stuff. And even the elevator is nothing more than controlling a joystick, which is also a child's game. So this is my real secret. I look for the fun in my job. And we also do it at Montexi. There we have this mission, creating great places to work, great fun places to work. And so we do it by little stuff that, doesn't, that they don't cost any money. We have, for example, uh, monthly birthday drinks with a DJ. And uh, we even participated at Car Free Day last year. We're going to do it this year again. So, and we immediately put a bet on it. If uh, more than 50 people come by other meetings and car to work, then the company will do this or that. We also organize sportive incentives, and this is nice before, because colleagues start to do, uh, to practice sports after the hours together, and we do family events and things like that. But that's all fun after five o'clock. What do we do between nine and five? Well, we know communication is really important to have a good relationship with your colleagues. And if you have a good relationship, then you will start to have fun. So this year we introduced Yammer. I don't know if you know Yammer. Yammer is a kind of internal Facebook. And uh, it's marvelous. You can put your messages, your announcements, questions on it, preferably work-related. And um, if you have, for example, a question about brownfields, you just put it on Yammer, and within a few hours, you have an answer because this expertise is all spread all over the company and you immediately get an answer from a colleague who has already uh, done something with Brownfields. So this is one of the things we do, fast communication. And another thing we did um, uh, is a workshop for all our uh, employees because everybody is different and different is good, but it also causes problems sometimes. Sometimes you don't understand why your colleague is doing what he is doing the way he is doing it. So um, everybody knows this, I suppose, MBTI, a marvelous instrument, but oh my God, it's so difficult to uh, remember. So what we did is uh, we did a workshop for all employees and more work-related and more simple by colors. It's a disc scan, so you have these colors, red is dominant, and for example, green is somebody who likes stability. So um, the blue one, that's someone who is really precise. And what we've seen is almost every one of us has two dominant colors. And when we looked at our, for example, our software people, they were mainly red and blue. And God, blue is very good when you're writing software. So, um, and after that, 
we asked him, uh, so you have these strong sides and, and then you have these weaknesses and, and, and it helped us to understand why somebody was acting the way he was acting. And we also asked him, how do you, do you like your communication? And uh, our software people, this is what they say, they say we want it to be complete and accurate. Don't give us social talks. Please don't ask me on Monday morning how my weekend was. And I'm not going to ask it to you. And most preferably, if you have an IT issue and you want to tell it to me, please do it by screenshots. So it was very nice to have this. It was very interesting and we had a lot of, uh, of fun doing this exercise, but it really helped to, for people to understand um, how his, his colleague uh, taught and, and what he felt. And, and so since we've done this exercise, we, the relationship, relationships are better and we have um, less discussions and, and people adjust. They understand one another. And you can also use it when you're recruiting. For example, if you need someone at finance, perhaps you could look for a blue one. And when you need somebody for human resources, yellow or green are nice colors to have. And we even gave a workshop to our salespeople. And we, told, we, we learned them how they can recognize the color of the prospect of the client in front of them. Because that way he can adjust his behavior and he can uh, ask the right questions and give the right argumentation. But of course, for all this fun and all this investment and all this time, you have to convince your board. And well, it's simple. People who are motivated are more productive. That they already know. So they want to know how satisfied is our personnel. So this is something we do every two years. And you see the evolution. So all the actions we have done We've done more than I'm telling you today, but all the actions we have done, they really improved our satisfaction. And I've taken the liberty of changing a quote of Mr. Shaw, and I've made this out of it. We don't stop playing because we have to work. We have the feeling that we're working because we stopped playing. So this is also what I try to convince my board of. Please, if you don't want people to feel their job like a job, like something hard, well, give them to op the opportunity and give them the time to play a bit. I have two advices for you today, and one of them is do something crazy every day. It doesn't mean to be big stuff. It can be singing in your car loudly, or when you hear a nice song on the radio, you take your colleague and you do a little turn. But do something crazy every day. I don't know if you know this. It's the checklist from Catnet. Catnet is a Belgian television station for the youth. And I have made a checklist of things a child should do before it's 12 years old. Funny things, crazy things, well, dangerous things. So I would recommend you make your own list. What kind of crazy things do you want to do in your life? Another thing. Do something scary every day. Because doing something scary helps you to have fun, to improve. So, I have to say, when I'm driving this one, and I have five men next to me and behind me, oh God, I'm so scared, because all of these macho men, at that moment, when I'm driving, it's like five heights and buckets. So, Every time I put this one back in the carriage, I'm so glad, so glad that I had no accidents. So this is something scary for me. And also today is something scary for me because it's only the second time that I'm talking in front of an audience. But I want to have that mastery. I want to improve myself. So this is my first talk in English. So my advice, do something scary every day. And I would like to end with this one. It's a warning. It's a warning. I know it's also my problem because my children often say, Mommy, are you again working? You always work. So it's also, to me, the threat for the whole idea around new work because those boundaries between work and life 
between your family and your job, they fade away. So um, I give you this warning. I hope you do something with it. I hope you try to look for the fun in your job and in your life. And um, I'll give the uh, pointer back to uh, this lady. Um, thank you very much, and I hope you have a lot of fun today.